Hello again from my front porch. It's a blustery day here in Des Moines, Iowa today. The wind is blowing. I'm sure you're going to hear it in the background here with the windows rattling and everything because of the wind blowing outside. But I'll tell you, at least, at least there's no snow. Literally, there is no snow. We had, we had thunderstorms on Christmas Day. <laughs> And whatever little snow was left is all gone now. So, so from my vantage point, again, I'm very pleased with that. I'm very happy. Uh, but you know, speaking of Christmas stuff, you do you? Some people just I, I am so amazed at some people. You know, Christmas is a full what 364 days away, and there are people right here on my street who already have their Christmas decorations up. Can you believe that? <laughs> Okay, so so we just had Christmas yesterday. All right, I get it. I understand. <laughs> and, and in all seriousness, I hope that you had a very Merry Christmas, whether you were with uh, family or, or a group of friends or maybe like myself, uh, you know, you didn't really have anyone or anywhere to go. So you got looped in with an invitation to what I fondly call the Island of Misfit Toys. You know, those individuals that take pity on the lonely like myself, you know, <laughs> make sure you get brought in. But I do want to give a shout out to my good friends, Jack and Tara, who uh, ever since my divorce, they have been wonderful in inviting me over uh, for the holidays, uh, any of the holidays to come over and, and join with them uh, at, at their house to, to have all the holiday festivities. Uh, you know, people observe that that uh, I comment uh, about going out and hanging out with different friends, going to see different uh, local live music bands and stuff. And I know a lot of people through those circles. Uh, but, you know, there's a difference between knowing people and then having the people be uh, friends enough with you that they would invite you to make sure that you are not alone for the holidays. And so, uh, you know, I, again, I, friends like Jack and Tara are really great friends. And, and, and even though they wouldn't like me bragging about it, sorry, folks, I am going to brag about it just a little bit anyway, because I am very, very happy that I did not have to spend Christmas alone because I had these good friends who looked out for me. That was that was fantastic. I appreciated it very, very much. Uh, and speaking of friends I appreciate very much, I want to give a shout out to my good friend Aaron Siegfried because my good friend Aaron Siegfried gave me this hoodie. See, I'm, I'm wearing this, you know, I'm not wearing the dad sweater. I'm wearing this hoodie because this is a gift that I received too. Check out what's on this hoodie. That's right. It is Darth Vader himself. Dun, 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 da, da, dun, da, da. <laughs> now, I have not yet had a chance to go see the new Star Wars movie. Um, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I could have gone to see it if I went by myself, but I keep trying to uh, find someone to go along with, to share that 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 fun with, that joy with, and um, you know, it just hasn't worked out so far. So I'm still hoping I'm going to get to go see that in the theater and and uh, and enjoy that. But but uh, I, I do love this this. This hoodie, I've been wearing it all day today, very comfortable, uh, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm pleased for that. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate the gift very much. But in all honesty, as much as I want to thank all these people, that's not really the main reason I wanted to do an episode today. The main reason I want to do an episode today is because I wanted to send some very special birthday wishes to my dad, Zine Oliver Smith, who is celebrating his 77th birthday today. Happy birthday, Dad! Now, he doesn't have a computer, so he is not uh, on Facebook, he's not on YouTube, but I'm sure that my siblings will get a chance to, to show it to him. If nothing else, I can show it to him when he and my mom are here visiting later in the week. They're going to be here as he's getting some cataract surgery done, and oh, rest assured, while they're here, we will do some more front porch time because they were just so much fun last time. But I digress. I wanted to say happy birthday to my dad. Now, my dad, I, I, I want him to know that I am very, very proud that he is my dad. Now, that's not to say that we've always seen eye to eye. We have, we have had some uh, interesting times when I was growing up where we didn't necessarily, we weren't necessarily on the same page with some stuff. And, and you know, for a while, I didn't really fully understand, uh, you know, what, his problem was, of course, you know, when you're young, you just assume that anything that's wrong is always the parents' fault because they're the ones that don't know what they're doing. 
Well, in my dad's case, he, he really kind of didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> I was the firstborn. He was an only child, and his parents were uh, pretty, pretty strict, pretty, pretty uh, uh, specific about everything. And so that was what he grew up with. He, 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 he was ill-equipped to be a father at the point that I came along. And, and I don't say that to, to bash him. I say that as I understand that's, that was what he was dealing with at the time. Now, since then, they had a lot more practice because I have four other siblings who came along. So he had much more opportunity to, to, to work things out. Um, but still, even though there were some rocky times that my dad and I had, today, I can honestly say that I love that man very much. I'm very proud to be his son. I am proud to have him as my dad. Uh, you know, he, he still, he can still be a little crazy in a bit of a handful of times, but come on, who of us does that not fit every now and again? Come on. <laughs> so, so really, uh, you know, this, this, this is a guy who, who, I mean, when I was a kid, there were so many times that, that I that I looked up to him and I wanted to be like him. Even even during times when I, you know, struggled with some of the other emotional things and stuff, but I always saw him as someone who was a good man, a, a, the kind of a man to try to emulate being, especially during his time when he was a police officer and and I would see how he would help people and I would see how even though he was in a uniform wearing a badge and other people would be bad mouthing police officers and all people always treated him well. They treated him was with respect because he treated other people with respect. Uh, there's one story that I just, I, I wanna share about his time as police officer that that really to me was, was, was a, a huge, huge thing. I'd never really thought about how serious my dad's job was until I, until I heard about this story. And this was one of the last experiences that he had before he ultimately left the police department. But, he uh, uh, went to a domestic disturbance uh, call with a couple that, that he was aware of, that he knew, and they'd had on again, off again problems. They were always getting arguments all the time. And so he goes to this, these people's house, and it turns out that the wife is called because the husband is, is the one who has moved out. Um, and, he, and he's not supposed to be there. Maybe a court order and stuff wasn't supposed to be. Well, anyway, the husband had apparently gotten drunk and had shown up at the house. Well, when my dad pulls up in front of the house, this guy is, uh, is, is leaning in the passenger side of his vehicle out in the driveway, and he sees my, the cop car pull up, and he, he, he scrambles something, he slams the door, and he runs into the house. Well, my dad goes into the house and he goes up to the door and the wife is, is just all, all upset. And she says, he can't be here. He can't be here. You got to get him out of here. He's not supposed to be here. And so my dad goes in, tries to talk to him. And he's, again, the guy's drunk and he's not listening. And he's saying, I want to say goodnight to my children. I want to say goodnight to my children, who apparently their bedrooms are downstairs in the basement. So uh, she is saying, get him out of here. He's going to wake the kids. He's going to wake the kids. And, you know, personally, as an aside, I think that at this point, the kids are probably plenty awake with all of the shouting, but irregardless. She's saying, get him out of here. He's not supposed to be here. He's insisting, I'm going to say goodnight to my kids. And my dad is trying to talk to them both and get them to calm down. Well, the husband just takes off down the stairs. And my dad's like, oh, man. And so he goes after him. He goes down the stairs after him. My dad gets about halfway down the stairs and the guy in front of him suddenly stops, turns, and he has a gun. And he puts the gun in my dad's stomach because, again, he's lower. So he just boom, right up in, into his stomach. And my dad looks down and sees this gun. And without saying anything else, the guy pulls the trigger. And my dad says that he watched that hammer on that gun go boom. And he just said it was like slow motion. And it went click. And as soon as it did that, the guy takes it and he throws the gun to the side and says, oh, it's just a toy anyway. Well, by this point, another officer has shown up and is standing up in the living room, looking down on the stairway, seeing all of this happening. And he has his gun drawn. And had that guy not thrown the gun to the side, the other cop undoubtedly would have shot him. But my dad is standing there still waiting for his heartbeat to start back up again. And gets gets a sense about it. He, he grabs the guy. They, they come back up the stairs. And as they're getting into the top of the stairs, the other officer has retrieved the gun and he says, no, this ain't no toy. This is a real gun. My dad's heart, again, sinks. 
Well, in the events that ensued, they came to find out that out in the guy's car in the driveway, because the wife could say, go ahead and search it. It's on her, it's on her property. Uh, that in the passenger side where the guy had been when my dad pulled up, there was this box of shell, a box of bullets that he apparently was trying to load the gun, but he was drunk and he was, he was fumbling with it. And then my dad scared him in the cop car and he pulled up and the guy ran inside. Had my dad been just a little bit late getting there, had he been a minute later or so, there would have been bullets in that gun. And that story would have obviously turned out dramatically differently. Now, that is quite a story, but that's a story that my dad experienced during his time as a police officer where his goal was to try to help people, and then he had situations like that occur. Uh, so, you know, that, that, that made a big impression on me that he did that. But even after he left the police department and went on to, to, to work with and sell appliances, you say, well, that's an odd transition. No, no, not really. Because my dad has always been very mechanically inclined. He is a self-taught auto mechanic and electrician and appliance repair guy. He can do really anything except carpentry. Apparently that was a skill his dad had. <laughs> now, if you're wondering about me, I did not inherit any of these skills of either of those generations. <laughs> I can kind of get by, but I'm not, yeah, I'm nowhere near the level that any, my dad or my grandfather apparently were. So anyhow, uh, he, he used to, to get old appliances that were broken down and he would put work into it, refurbish it, and then resell them, but resell them really, really cheap so that people who didn't have good working appliances could get them. That's my dad. And when he was selling appliances, another, another story for you, there was a couple that came in and they came in and they were looking for, they wanted a, they wanted a, I believe it was a stove, that they wanted a stove and they were looking for five specific things they wanted the stove to do. And so they said to my dad, who was selling the appliances, they said, so we're looking for a stove that does these five things. And he goes, eh, you know, I don't think we got, you know, we've got all these different brands of stoves here, but you know, I don't, there are none of them that do all five of those things. I can show you ones that do four of those things, but there, none of them do all five of those. Well, you sure you're really, yeah, well, okay, well, we'll take a look what you got here. So he shows them what he has uh, of the ones that'll do four of the things. And they thanked him and then they left. And a couple of days later, this same couple shows back up and they said they went to other appliance places. They're in Carroll and maybe other communities, but they went to other appliance places and they asked the salespeople there the same thing. They're looking for a stove that does these five things. Can you sell us a stove that does these five things? And all of the other places, the salespeople said, oh yeah, 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 we got it. We got stoves to do that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I got one right over here. And they would show the couple the exact same stoves that my dad had shown them. But my dad had told them about the four things that it would do and explained why none of them did the fifth. Now, I don't know what those things were. I don't remember that part of the story. That doesn't matter. What matters is these people came back to buy the appliance, the, the, the stove from my dad, because if they were going to have to settle for a stove that only gave them four of the five things, they were going to buy it from the guy who was honest with them and told them that up front. That is my dad. So I am very proud of, of the type of man that my dad is. Now, again, he has his rough edges. We all have our rough edges. But at his core, he is a good, decent, honest man. And he set a tremendously high bar for the rest of us to live up to in terms of the type of character that we had. Now, he also taught us how to be a character too. <laughs> but still, I love that man. I love him to pieces. And today he is 77 years old. And I just, I just had to say very happy birthday wishes to him. That's why I got the happy birthday bag up too. Well, I mean, you know, Christmas is done. So I took the Christmas bag down, but I put the happy birthday bag up because of my dad's birthday. So even though most of you watching this don't have a clue who he is, trust me, he is a great guy. So please join with me in singing happy birthday to him, will you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear dad. Happy birthday to you. 
and many more. <laughs> really, love that man, love him to pieces, and I'm looking forward to having both him and my mom here visiting on my front porch here in the next few days as well. So, be looking forward to that. Thanks for joining me this time, and I'll see you next time from my front porch.